Hi guys, this is Spork. Uh, I figured I'd kick off my uh, series on how to do leather uh, leather stamping for paw prints with a canine forepaw, which is pretty much the this the cliche standard that everyone's used to seeing. Um, I've got three different sizes, uh, each requiring a couple different pear shaders. Uh, and if you need uh, claw tips, like on the smallest one, uh, on any of the, the uh, two larger ones, then all you have to do is take a stop and kind of rock it forward. Uh, you could also use a stylus, uh, the point, the non-ball point, and kind of slide it in sideways to get that. Uh, you want kind of a slightly triangular look, basically, with a bit of depth to it. Um, I'll cover that at the end of the video as well. Um, but to start off, we'll, we'll go with the smallest paw here. I've gone ahead and cased my leather uh, just kind of the lazy quick way with a sponge and let it start drying back to its normal color. Uh, it's still a little bit damp. Uh, it's probably about a six ounce veg tan, uh, undyed. Just something I pulled out of my scrap bin. Uh, I wouldn't do it on anything less than maybe a four ounce uh, for most paw prints, especially if you're going to do claw tips. Uh, it, with the, the force required to, to really get some depth, which makes them look better, you can tend to break the top grain. Uh, that's kind of this crackly look right in here. Is what happened is it's starting to break. So you want to watch out for that, because that can be a structural issue if you're using it on something like a strap or something. Um, but to start off with a small paw print, um, I've got a Tandy nine, uh, P972. It's this little pear shader right here. And that does the main body, as you can see on the callout sheet I made. And then I've taken an H907 stop, and I've modified it a little bit because I do a fair amount of paw prints. Uh, it doesn't show up too well. But on the very tip point on that left hand side here, right in there is a slight notch. And that gives the separation between the toe and the claw tip, which makes it just go real quick in one hit. So to start off, take our 972 pear shader and poly mallet. And with the pointed end towards uh, well, we start with the base. So this hit right here is usually where I start. At the pointed end facing up towards the top of the leather at a slight angle, um, probably about a 1.30 to 2 o'clock position if the top was noon. And give it a good whack. Get some depth to it. And that's a little too deep, but I still have not broken the top grain quite yet. So I just have to make sure to keep everything else about that depth. So now we've got that. Now we do a, a mirror image basically, making sure that the tip overlaps a little bit. And do a second setup. And you can go back and clean it up a little bit. Um, the next two hits form the top point here with the point facing out towards the, the bottom uh, at the same, at a similar angle, but a little bit steeper than um, what you've already done. So what I like to do is I nestle the point here up against this little V shape that we've kind of created, this little point at the bottom by angling our pear shader, uh, and then get the, uh, the first hit here at more of a 12, 12.30 to 1-ish, uh, a lot steeper um, than what it was on the other angle. Uh, with the fat side toward the top. 
and give it a decent whack. And repeat with a different angle, with the opposite angle for the other side of the top. And then clean it up a little bit if you want. So the main defining points that you're trying to get are a slight angle out here which will let you get this little point right in here. And then there's a very slight curve on either side here, which is why these top hits are steeper. It's kind of a, a three circle, oblong circle-y deal. And that's the base paw or the palm type area for the paw. The next hits are for the claw tips. And this is where my modified uh, H907 stop comes in. Uh, it requires, since it's smaller, a lot less force to go just as deep, especially since this isn't quite dry right now. Uh, it's a little bit wetter than normal, which means stuff will go deeper easier. Uh, you start on the left side or the right side, slightly above the bottom lobe, and give it a whack. And if you have to angle it, either keep it straight out or angle towards the center slightly. And then I move up, uh, aligning the bottom half of the stop, the fat end, kind of with uh, that claw tip a little bit. And I angle it in ever so slightly. And then I have my other one. And finish up with the outer lobe hip. And that's your basic paw. Uh, it's at a slight angle, it looks like. It takes a bit of practice, and I'm, for the purpose of this video, that'll still work. Um, especially with a better example above. Um, the easiest way to get those claw tips, uh, the paw at this, this size, without, um, without really having to, uh, or without having the claw tips on it, would probably be to take this stop and rock it backwards uh, towards the fat end. I'll do that right here real quick. And what that does is, uh, even with an unmodified stop, we'll just create the paw tip, the, the paw finger pad. So let's move to the next size up. And the next size up, for the center area, we use the P703 uh, pear shader, which is a bit larger. But all the paw prints are pretty much the same style um, as far as a four paw goes. There are slight differences between four paws and hind paws. Uh, I'll show you that very last thing. Just, uh, just a minor variation on the palm area. Uh, but we again just repeat our initial pattern caught to the side, fat end towards the left on this hit, and then a mirror image to create that bottom area point, and then nestle that tip, the small tip, with the fat end up, and do the same on the other side, and then clean it up. So there's that. And then our P972, which we used in the previous one for the base, now becomes the paw tips because of the size ratio. Uh, just seems to work out for which tools are available as of right now. Um, and again, you start a little offset. And then move up. And over, and down. And there's our midsize. 
So now, um, just to repeat the process a third time, we'll take our 703, which we used for the base, and grab a P206, which is the second largest pear shader they uh, offer right now. Uh, and it is that big. And that, the 206 will become the base. And the 703 will become the paw tips. So, as again, go ahead and create that base, which requires a bit more force this time. Um, on this size, I find the deeper the leather, the better, because you can get, uh, or the, the thicker the leather, the better, because you can get a harder hit onto this um, and get that kind of dark burnished effect from the pear shader. And I kind of rock this one towards the fat end when I'm doing the top. Um, it just tends to give a better impression. And it doesn't matter if they're quite, you know, they're not quite exactly the same or perfect. They're paw prints. Uh, it's a natural occurring thing. Um, it, it's just, I mean, they're natu nature has a bunch of variances in it and you're never going to get them exactly the same every time without doing a billion of them anyway. Um, and to be honest, unless you're looking really close or doing competition work, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it still looks good. So we'll take our P203, or 703, which we used for the base for the previous ball, and do the tips. Um, and here's a good example of screwing up a little bit. Um, the, the biggest thing that defines the paw print look to keep it from looking too derpy is the distance between these um, together and from the base. Um, this one's a little bit far out. It could have been brought in over this way and both of the two uh, middle ones could probably have been brought in a little closer. When you're going fast uh, or even faster than what I was just doing, uh, it tends to drift a little bit, and that just takes some practice to get used to. Um, so that's pretty much it for the paw prints uh, for the canine four paw. There are um, slight variances. Um, for instance, you can take a pointed stylus and get those paw tips in. I'll do it on the middle one here. I'm taking it at an angle and just kind of pressing down and then I kind of wiggle it back and forth to get that base a little wider because claw tips when you do them this way without the wiggle the tip tends to be bigger just because you're pressing it in deeper. Um, to be honest, it's not that great of an impression using the stylus, uh, with the exception of doing it possibly on the small paw if you don't want to modify a stop that you already have. And uh, I, I prefer using a stop just to do the tips, uh, but I also enjoy modifying the tools to do what I need to do. Uh, it's pretty simple, just requires a few files and things. Uh, the last difference uh, that I'm going to show here is on the, uh, I'll modify the big paw here real quick. There's a final hit you can do to make it look like a hind paw. Uh, normally on the hind paw, you want a little bit wider on the base angle, and then you'll take the point, put it towards down on the, uh, the point that you form when you make the two initial base hits, and you just slightly want to get it in there. That didn't work too well. Anyway, now that works out pretty well. So what I've done here is create this slight rolling W effect. Uh, the more even, the better it'll look. Um, but the hind paw is basically, that's the main difference, is that little W. 
Other things you can do are uh, look online at different animals. This is pretty much a standard canine paw print. It also covers foxes, um, foxes, wolves, dogs, whatnot. Just take a look online uh, at you know the animal track that you're looking to do. Scale it to the animal, and uh, they have different strides. So when you're doing a series of paw prints, if you want to make it look natural, um, you'll probably want to see just Google it and look to see what the different strides look like so that you can place them in the right spot. Um, there's some cool things you can do with the paw prints once you're done. Uh, here's a piece I made out of that larger paw print. It uh, uses a technique I kind of just fiddled around with, uh, basically block dyeing. Uh, I'll cover that in a later video most likely. Uh, other things you can do uh, I've been making these kind of leather dog tag type deals with the small print. Uh, and there's really not much of a limit. So, uh, hope the video helps. I'll be having, uh, I'll be doing at least three or four more on different animal tracks. Uh, and then probably a few on some other basic leather work. Um, so, until next time, this is Spork.